Tony Shea built online shoe retailer Zappos.com into an e-commerce powerhouse and then sold it to Amazon for over a billion dollars last year. In his new book, Delivering Happiness, Tony revealed that he was reluctant at first to sell the company, though private equity investor Sequoia was quite eager to. I spoke with him recently as he tried to set the record straight. The initial idea of selling it uh, really didn't sit well with me, but actually as we explored the different options we had and thought about our vision of really delivering the best customer service and spreading this idea of delivering happiness in the workplace, we, just, we figured out that actually partnering with Amazon made the most sense and made, would actually allow us to get there faster. So it, you may be happy with it now, but what you talk about in here is um, what happened in the depths of the financial crisis. It was hard for retailers to get credit, credit and it was, um, you know, heart-wrenching for so many private equity investors to, to take the risk, to put more uh, money into their investments. And your investors, Sequoia Capital, really nudged you towards this decision. And in some ways, you felt that there was a coup afoot if you hadn't. Uh, I think the way it was stated in certain press was probably a bit overstated. We were not forced in any way to do anything. Really, for us, it was a decision between do we choose a slower growth path or a faster growth path under the Amazon umbrella, and we decided that a faster growth path was a win-win for everyone. It's a win for our investors from Sequoia. It was a win for our employees, and ultimately, it's a win for Amazon as well. Yeah, I think we have a statement that you released uh, at the time when it was rumored that you you would be selling, but you didn't necessarily want to be. Um, and, and you said that no one's being forced to. The articles and rumors of Sequoia forcing us to sell are simply not accurate. That's right. But that's not the full story, right? I mean, you, you were being pushed to do this. Why did you choose Amazon? Why was that the right decision? Well, we... I guess being forced implies that we wouldn't have a choice to do it, and we definitely had a choice. And so it was really just a decision between, under with our previous board, how would we be able to grow, and with Amazon, how would we be able to grow? And with Amazon, it just ended up being something that made much more sense for all the parties involved. So we actually make our decisions independent from Amazon, and we actually have a, a document that describes the five tenets of us working together, and one of the tenets is that that they understand our culture is what's made us what we are today and they seek to protect that. And so there are actually instances where we make a decision that's the complete opposite of the decisions that Amazon as a whole makes. Now you've been a successful entrepreneur even before Zappos. You sold your first business when you were just in your 20s for over $200 million to Microsoft, mm -hmm. I believe. I mean, are there lessons in here? Are there warnings to other people who are, are starting up as entrepreneurs to perhaps uh, avoid? What was one of your biggest mistakes? I, I mean. Does does it involve this this sale or the relationship, how you structured the deal with Sequoia in the first place? Would you have done that differently? Uh, I don't think we would have done it differently because Sequoia's involvement actually accelerated our growth in the in, in the earlier years. And but in terms of probably the biggest mistake I've made in the past, it was actually with Link Exchange, where we didn't pay attention to company culture. And I remember it was a lot of fun when it was just five or ten of us and we were sleeping under our desk had no idea what day of the week it was, but we didn't know any better to pay attention to culture. And by the time we got to 100 people, even though we hired people with all the right skill sets and experiences, uh, the culture just went completely and downhill. And culture is a huge focus for you at Zappos. Right. I mean, we've got all this video of, of uh, all these different ways that you're engaging your employees right. out there. So and, and so in some ways, you might say, oh, that link exchange was a bad experience. But if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have as much focus on culture at Zappos as we do today. Do you think that you perhaps overweight that in this experience? I mean, that there had been concerns that perhaps you were spending too much time or too much money encouraging a culture and uh, enjoyment of your employees in the workplace. What they found from the research actually surprised them, and one of them was that great companies all had strong cultures and strong values. And what it, it actually didn't matter what the values are. What mattered was that they had them and they committed to them. And so we formalized the definition of our culture into 10 core values and we actually interview people for those values independent of their specific job experience and uh, technical ability. We have to leave it here, but I want to ask you one specific thing when you're talking about that. Is it true that you give your employees the option to quit 
an, an, an financial incentive to quit? Uh, it is true. At the end of the first week of on the job, we offer employees a bonus of $2,000 to quit and leave the company. It's a standing offer until the end of the training. And that actually, you think, helps them stay? Uh, yeah, we, what we find is even employees that don't take the offer when they come back into the office on Monday are that much more engaged and committed and uh, really it forces them to think about is this a company whose culture is a match for them. That was uh, CEO Tony Shea.